Good morning. My name is Somu Kandakuri and today I'm going to talk to you about virtualized Volti and Agile innovation. And I'm going to show you a few demonstrations as well. So to start off with, why does Volti virtualization really matter? We all know the benefits that a cloud deployment brings to you. We know that it's faster to market. We know that it reduces your cost quite significantly. And all this gives you a pretty good advantage. But at the end of it, if you still have a closed system that now you've moved to the cloud, what you'll end up with is just that. You'll end up with a closed system in the cloud, which is while it gives you these benefits, it's not going to be very easy to change. However, when the cloud deployment model is coupled with open telecom products, that's when you start to see the agile innovation and the service differentiation start to uh, take place. And this is what lets you offer your customers an enriched user experience. Um, this is what we call a DevOps sort of a model. I mean, most of you are probably already familiar with DevOps, but it's quite literally a contraction of development and operations. And it's all about reducing the friction between these two functions in your organization and increasing the velocity of innovation. If you look at the web world today, most of them follow this kind of a model. I mean, their services aren't standing still. They're constantly making changes, constantly making innovations, right? So they have an idea, they make a change, they test it, they build it and deploy it, and it's out there for the users to use. And the other key thing is they're not waiting for uh, a big release to come out in six months time where they'll launch 10 features. Every time they want to do something, they go ahead and do it. And that's what DevOps brings to the table. It's all about continuous but safe innovation. This is the model that we believe operators need to take up as well to remain competitive in this marketplace. So what are we showing today? We're going to be showing three things. The first one is Volti in the cloud. Um, we're going to show uh, that we've deployed a full Volti solution in the public cloud today. And then we're going to run through a demonstration where we show you um, calls and invoking MMTEL services, which are running in the cloud. And then we'll quickly move on to the interesting part, which is the differentiation, right? And uh, this is where we'll show that Volti is actually table stakes, but the interest for operators really lies in offering um, differentiating services to their users. And we'll take an example of a parental control service for that. And then we'll move on to um, the service innovation piece, which is where we take a DevOps type uh, model to show how a small enhancement to an existing parental control service can be made very quickly and very easily. So Volti in the cloud. Um, so this is what we have today. So we are obviously in, in Barcelona today, and uh, we are going to be showing you a demonstration which is using uh, a Volti platform, Volti solution deployed in EC2 in Ireland and in Frankfurt. On the left, you can see a schematic of the solution that we have. So on top, you can see that it's our open cloud Sentinel Volti platform which has the SCC and MMTEL functions. And we have uh, all the other things that go towards making a full-blown um, Volti deployment. So we have IMS and SPC and MRF and HSS as well. Um, one thing I'd like to point out here is uh, you may have seen a press release that came out a few days back, uh, which talked about a fully virtualized um, an NFV trial that we did as part of uh, for Telecom Austria Group. Um, that was a very similar setup. It, had, it didn't have all these components, but it had most of these components. Uh, but they had a live LTE network and real Volti handsets um, talking to this kind of a setup. And uh, that was quite a successful trial for us. Um, the key difference here is we don't have an LTE network and we don't have Volti handsets, so we're going to be using Wi-Fi as the access layer. Apart from that, uh, everything else remains the same. Um, so how do we, we all know that deploying to the cloud is very quick, right? But how do we actually deploy to the cloud? So this is a speeded up video of the actual physical deployment. Um, on the left, you have our Jenkins CI system and the output of that console. And on the right, we have the EC2 console. And you'll notice that there is already an, an instance running, which is a Volti SDK instance. We'll be using that in a subsequent part of the demo. So uh, don't, don't worry about that for now. And in the top right corner, we have a little timer uh, that will show you how long it takes to actually uh, deploy. So let me just run this. So on the left, you can see, um, obviously, that uh, you know the output of the console where it's actually pushing things out and configuring them. On the right, in the EC2 console, you can see that all the elements, SPC, IMS, 
HSS, the TAS, the MRF, all are being deployed, not just being deployed, but fully configured as well. So there you go, six minutes and 42 seconds. That's what it's taken us for to start from scratch and to deploy an entire IMS and Volti and to configure it so that it's up and ready to accept calls and run services. Um, there you go, in less than seven minutes, right? I mean, this typically takes an operator, you know, a few months or even a year. It could take them to deploy this. Uh, we've done it in less than seven minutes. Now that it's deployed, let's, let's run through a demo. So as part of the demo, we have three phones here. We have Alice, Bob, and Charlie. And uh, as first part of the demo, I just make a simple call from Alice to Bob. Uh, it'll be a volte call, it'll be going through the cloud, and you'll notice that it's actually very, very quick to set up as well. And then we'll start invoking some basic services like uh, Alice hiding her caller ID, Bob rejecting anonymous calls, and then finally we'll uh, show you uh, Bob setting up unconditional forwarding to Charlie for all calls. Okay, so let's skip to the demo. So here we have three phones. We have Alice, Bob, and Charlie. For the first part of the demo, we're just going to uh, make a call from Alice to Bob. So Alice is just going to call Bob. You can see that it's Alice calling, and I'll just answer the call. And yeah, so that's a Volti call going through the cloud, and it was set up pretty quickly because that's one of the advantages of a Volti call, right? I mean, reduced call setup times. Um, and at this point, the call is set up. It is going through the TAS, but no services are being invoked. So let's hang up here, and let's start uh, invoking some services. So let's start off with some simple services. So Alice goes in, and she decides to hide her caller ID, and then she calls Bob again. And this time, Bob gets a call, but you'll notice that it's anonymous. So Alice's setting has immediately taken effect. So the OAR service has kicked in and decided that uh, her identity is not to be presented to Bob. Now, Bob decides that he doesn't want to accept any anonymous calls because he's being um, troubled by them. So he's rejected all anonymous calls. Now, when Alice tries to call Bob, So the call gets refused, an announcement gets played saying this number does not accept anonymous calls and that's what you'd expect to see. And finally, your Bob uh, goes in and he decides to forward all calls to Charlie. You'll notice that Charlie is set up as number ending 386. 386, so that's what we'll set this up to. And go back. So now when Alice calls Bob, so announcement gets played, call being diverted, and then you'll notice that Charlie's phone uh, call has been diverted to Charlie. Okay, so we saw some MMTEL services running on top of the deployment that we just made in under seven minutes. So now that's done, let's move on to differentiation. All operators are going to offer standard voltage services, right? And most vendors are going to offer standard voltage solutions as well. But let's not forget that there are already a large number of providers out there, OTT providers, who are offering rich, personalized voice and messaging services. In order to stay competitive in this kind of a marketplace, we believe that operators need an open product that will enable them to not just offer standard MMTEL, but also offer additional value-added services as well. In fact, one of our customers who is going to be launching Multi in, uh, uh, in the middle of this year, in Asia, in fact, um, chose us for precisely that reason. They decided that standard MMTEL, you know, standard IO92 services weren't going to cut it for their subscribers. So they wanted something that they could use to deploy additional services such as enhanced video calling, um, CRBT, uh, VMS, and so on. And that's why they chose our platform. So this is this is what we call going beyond standard quality. And I'll show you an example using parental controls of how we go beyond standard quality. So parental controls is a fairly simple service, but it's, it's, it's quite sophisticated as well. Using this service, a parent can basically protect their child. They can make sure that you know, their child is protected from malicious calls, uh, that their child is not calling premium rate numbers, for example, that uh, the parent can set time restrictions in place and so on and so forth. The important thing is this service is, um, is just an example. Um, it, is, it serves its purpose of basically showing how easy it is to deploy a service such as 
this on top of an already existing MMTEL setup. How do we do this? If you look at our uh, Voltitas uh, architecture, which is, uh, and our Voltitas is Sentinel Volti, um, it comes with a large number of functional blocks already pre-built into the product. Um, some of the services we saw as part of the previous part of the demonstration. It also comes with another module called Sentinel Create, which is the SDK. Now using this module, you can deploy other functional blocks into the product as well, into your deployment, so that it can be invoked for a certain number of calls, it can be invoked for a certain set of subscribers and so on. So what we're going to do is use Sentinel Create to deploy parental controls. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to flip to this. You'll notice that I'm already in there and I'm going to run ant initial PC and this is going to deploy parental controls and while that's going on I'm just going to take you through the flow of the demo um, so you, in this in this particular use case Charlie is the guardian Bob is the child and Alice is the caller and we saw that Alice could call Bob um, but when Charlie as the guardian enters Alice's number on the blacklist for Bob um, after that, Alice won't be able to call Bob, Bob won't be able to call Alice, and in fact, when Alice tries to hide her caller ID to try and get around it, she won't be able to, uh, the call won't be successful because uh, anonymous calls will be barred by default. So let's flip to the screen and uh, see that, yeah, now that's been successful. Uh, let's flip back and let's run through the demo. So now that we have parental controls deployed, um, on Charlie's phone, once I do a refresh, you'll notice that the new parental controls option pops up. This is because once we've deployed the service, the service actually pushes out an update to the app as well to refresh it because now there's a new setting to manage. Um, so on Charlie's phone, I'm going to go in there and be going to add Bob's number as the monitor number. You'll see that Bob is set up as number ending 202. So that's the monitor number. We're going to enable it and we're going to block Alice Alice is number ending 201 so we're blocking Alice from calling and I'm going to update that and this time when Alice calls Bob So announcement gets played, call gets declined. Obviously the announcement is can be tailored to whatever you want it to be. Um, and then Bob tries to call Alice. Sorry, but you're not allowed to call that number. Please talk to your guardian for more information. So same behavior again. And also when Alice tries to call, uh, hide her caller ID and calls Bob again. So it's the same user experience, right? So this is a service that was deployed on top of um, the services I showed you in the previous part of the demo. And these are being invoked both for Alice and for Bob when they try to make calls to each other. Okay, okay let's just summarize what we've seen. So we've seen that the, um, the Open Cloud Volti task is deployed in the cloud. We saw how open it was. We saw how easy it was to deploy a differentiating service function such as parental controls on top of an already existing MMTEL uh, deployment. Um, the key thing here is that this kind of service development doesn't need to be done by us. It can be done by your in-house dev team, it can be done by any other third party. It doesn't have to be open cloud. And this is what makes us truly open and uh, truly flexible. So let's move on to the third part now. Um, and let's talk about service innovation in a DevOps kind of a model. Now, if you remember what I said earlier was uh, DevOps is all about continual and safe innovation. So again, you're not waiting six months to have like a bunch of features that you're going to release. Every time you think of something, you say, wouldn't it be good if we had a product that had, wouldn't it be good if our product had this feature? And you can go ahead and deploy it. So in the spirit of that, We've taken this example, right? It's a small idea for an enhancement. Let's say that you have parental controls already running. Let's say that your marketing now has an idea and says, what about uh, if we uh, push notifications out to the guardian every time a call is barred? 
So every time an outgoing call is barred, incoming call is barred, we need to send a notification to the Guardian. So yeah, we can do that. So let's go ahead and do it. And this time I'm going to run another script within the SDK, which is update parent controls. And while that's running, I'm going to just flip to the code and show you here. Uh, so on the in the left pane we have the original feature and in the right one we have the patch feature and you'll notice on the left hand side there's these yellow highlights that indicate where changes have been made so if i navigate to those you'll notice that for example in case of an anonymous call the only change we've made is to add a um, call to a subroutine which is to send a reject message and this is true in pretty much every single scenario um, when I flip to this, uh, when I switch to this big yellow blob, this is the actual subroutine and you can actually see that what all we're doing here is basically using our SIP array to build a SIP message notification and sending it out to the Guardian. Okay, let's see if that's done. Yeah, uh, you can see that upgrade of parent controls has now been successful and now let's flip to the demo. So now that we deployed an update to parental controls, I'm going to go into Charlie's Lint phone. I'm going to leave the screen on there. And we're going to uh, make a call from Alice to Bob again. And from Alice's perspective, she hears an announcement. Call gets declined, but you'll notice that this little um, notification popped up. Let's open it up. It says incoming call from 201, which is Alice, to 202, which is Bob, was blocked. And the reason is it was blacklisted. Similarly, when we make a call from Bob to Alice. You're not allowed to call that number. Please talk to your guardian. Again, announcement gets played. Call would have gotten declined had I not hung up. Um, but the key thing is a notification, which I wanted to show you. Notification of an outgoing call. And uh, the reason as well, the fact that it was called, trying to call a blacklisted number. Now Alice tries to get around it by hiding her caller ID and she makes a call to Bob again and again you know this time it's detected as an anonymous call and uh, anonymous calls are blocked by default in the service so call was blocked. Okay to conclude what have we seen so far? We saw that Open Cloud Sentinel Volte is deployed in the cloud. We saw that it's truly fast to market. In fact it was deployed in a matter of minutes. We saw that um, and it reduces your cost quite drastically as well. That's the entire point of NFP and cloud. Um, and together with that, we saw the openness of Sentinel Volte as well. We saw how easy it is to deploy a differentiated service such as parental controls on top of an already existing MMTEL environment. We saw how easy it was again to innovate on top of uh, an existing MMTEL environment. So if your marketing is an idea, that they want to change or they want to add notifications to an existing parent to control setup, they can do that very, very easily. And together, this offers you a en enables you to offer enriched user experience to your customers. And we believe that this is the approach that operators need to take today in order to have a sustainable and competitive advantage in the marketplace. Thank you for your attention.